What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the commentary for The Best Shape of My Life with Will Smith. And it looks like we're at the final episode today. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as brief as humanly possible, and just in case it's really not really in my scope for, you know, talking points. It may be a lot more to do with, you know, stuff that's going on in his head and emotionally than in fitness, really. Uh, but we'll watch it and, you know, comment on whatever relevant bits are there. Of course, since this is the last episode, thank you want to say thank you to everybody who's been watching so far you guys have been awesome kicking it with me all these weeks uh and this has been a lot of fun so i appreciate you guys coming on the ride with me uh kind of sad this is the last one but uh nonetheless i feel like everything that is good must of course come to an end so without further ado let's get right into the episode The chapter is called Mutiny. Whip My Hair was a platinum global record. Willow was nine years old and had landed a 30-day European tour. Little girls around the world were whipping their hair. The iron was hot and it was time to strike. One night, Willow comes off stage in full post-performance bliss and jumps into my arms. I'm finished, Daddy. I'm ready to go home. Well, you, you can't be finished, sweetie. You just started. You have a few more weeks to go. It doesn't matter to you that I'm done, Daddy? Willow said. Well, of course it matters, baby, but you can't be done. You can't be finished until you complete what you promised to do. I woke up the next morning rested, a proud father ready to continue the Smith family conquest. Good morning, Daddy, Willow said so joyfully as she bounced to the refrigerator. My jaw nearly dislodged and shattered on the kitchen floor. During the night, Willow had shaved her entire head, totally bald. I had become a version of exactly what I was running away from. the chances of Will showing up today are? Oh, pretty minimal. Yeah, he's done. He's over working on this aspect. He's, he's working on the book. He's working on his book? Yeah. yeah. A big part of me wanting to, to do this, you know, is to kind of give you a better sense of some of the decisions that I made and uh, even understanding the origin of some of the horrific errors that, you know, I made during your childhood. Um, there's things in here you have heard before and there's some things that you haven't heard. I've worked hard to just be really honest, you know. We spent a raucous evening in the company of our dear friend, Jose Cuervo. Jada was on top of me and the sweet crescendo oh simultaneously crept upon us. As the majestic movement reached its culmination, a shockwave shudders through Jada's body, and then panic. A look of abject terror washed over her face. I'm pregnant, she said. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Babe, I'm not. This has nothing to do with fitness, but I just got to say it. I feel like nobody in the history of the universe really wants to hear about the actual moment of their conception. Just nope, 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 nope. That had to have been so uncomfortable for them. All right, let's get back into it. No fertility expert, I said, I'm pretty sure they're not even finished swimming yet. Jaden Christopher Sire Smith was born on July 8th, 1998. <laughs> Would I be smart enough to orchestrate the building of a wall for my son? Could I put food on the table and keep the lights on without fail? It's 3 a.m. I'm on my knees. I'm just a little boy. 
I never wanted my daddy so bad. And then, whew, damn. And then something clicked deep in a place where nothing had ever clicked before. A decision, an ironclad conviction. I wiped my tears, I stood up, I gently touched Trey's head, and I knew there were only two possibilities. One, I was gonna be the best father the planet had ever seen, or two, I was gonna be dead. Mm. After Earth was an abysmal box office and critical failure, and what was worse was that Jaden took the hit. Jaden had faithfully done everything I'd instructed him to do. This is why I wasn't going to do this part tonight. Jaden had faithfully done everything I had instructed him to do, and I had coached him into the worst public mauling he'd ever experienced. We never discussed it, but I sensed that he felt betrayed, and he lost his trust in my leadership. But at 15 years old, when Jaden asked to be an emancipated minor, my heart shattered. My world-dominating, hair-whipping global superstar was totally bald. But before I could respond, I felt something slowly turning, shifting until it clicked into place. In a moment of divine connection and revelation, she had reached me. It doesn't matter to you that I'm done, Daddy. I know it sounds crazy, but Willow's question put a Liberty Bell-sized crack in my worldview. It was just an innocent question from a daughter to her father, but somehow I knew it was more than that. What she was really asking me was, don't you care how I feel? It was the deepest existential human question. It may be the most important question that we as humans ask of each other. I was shaken. I leaned down, peered deeply into her eyes and said, I got it. I am sorry. Are you ready to go home? And as strange as it may sound, in that moment, I discovered feelings. One of Will's core conflicts clearly comes from his relationship with his father. And the only way that Will can let go of some of those chains of the past is to recognize that he's not his father, but rather he's taking away the parts of his father that speak to him and using those to inform his career and his life. Daddy O knew he was dying. I came to see him every week. One night, as I delicately wheeled him from his bedroom toward the bathroom, a darkness arose within me. The path between the two rooms goes past the top of the stairs. I could shove him down and easily get away with it. I'm Will Smith. No one would ever believe I killed my father on purpose. As a child, I'd always told myself that I would one day avenge my mother. As the decades of pain and anger and resentment coursed, then receded, I shook my head and proceeded to wheel daddy -o to the bathroom. Hey, Dad, I said nervously. OK. You did good. He took a pull off his Tarrant 100, turned his eyes back to the TV. He didn't seem like he was ready to go there just yet. But I was. I'm saying you did a great job with your life. And when you're ready to go, I want you to know that it's OK. You raised me well, and I got it from here. I'm going to take care of everybody you love. Daddy O nodded his head. His eyes welled. The soldier was gone. Looking back at this time when your kids were growing up, is there anything that you wish you had done differently? That's a tough one. There's things that I regret doing the way <clears throat> that I did them. 
about to tear up myself over this. I, I really regret that on occasion, I would fly off the handle. And I, I wish I had that, had had that ability to give things more thought before reacting. Damn, I gotta take a break on that one myself. I'm happy for him. I don't think things went exactly as planned, but it's about peace of mind, isn't it? Like, we're all trying to find that, I think. For me, I do it for sanity. I know that when I go for a run, I'm a better person. It's very grounding. And I think, uh, you know, what we got to accomplish during the time, I think he learned a lot. He's well on the way to maintaining that healthy, sustainable routine. Yeah, I think he did awesome. I'm really proud of him. The only way to actually create balance is to have boundaries. Will, like any of us, is looking for something sustainable, something that could be about a lifelong commitment to his own sense of balance between body, mind, and soul. You're out here solo today. I don't consider you with me to be solo, Jazz. OK, well. You are somebody. <laughs> Repeat after me, Jazz. I am. I am. Somebody. somebody. I am. Okay, I am somebody. somebody. There you go. Yeah. All right, peace. Hey, see you, man. Big ups, good stuff. He's back. He's back. Y'all saw that. Everyone saw that. I was not prepared um, for the level of um, pain and drain that would be in this journey revisiting of trauma and relationships and all of that like I had I had no idea how debilitating that would be all right so here's my last way in. sometimes achieving the actual goal earns you almost nothing but the journey itself teaches you everything you need to know Season two? <laughs> yeah, we should just start season two <laughs> right now. All right. So that is the end of the best shape of my life. So it was mostly to do with Will's mental state and emotional state. And I think, personally, I feel like in terms of fitness, health and fitness, really, I feel like it's all one big thing. I look at it as sort of like a monolithic beast which that includes all of those sorts of things. It includes, you know, your physical capabilities, your strength, your endurance, you know, that sort of thing, your power, but also your mental state, your emotional state, and lifestyle choices that you make that will either hurt or negatively impact all the factors previously mentioned. So um, it's important. It's extremely important, and it often ends up coming up whether you want it to or not during the journey of, of transformation. Um, an individual, like I said, as a whole, is comprised of all these things. When you're talking about the health and fitness of an individual, there's all those factors to consider. And so when you're trying to transform somebody, when you hit a sticking point, chances are it's because there's something you're not addressing that's laying, you know, hidden within there. And, you know, you can dig into the exercise, you can dig into the nutrition, but chances are when you dig deep enough, what you find is some sort of emotional, psychological, issue laying beneath the surface percolating something that's been festering for who knows how long which is interesting because in certain individuals it manifests itself as as a sticking point that stops people from being able to achieve certain things in other people the very reason they are who they are and are capable of what they're capable of has everything to do with the darkness that sits in their past um and I guess you kind of see both sides of that in this journey with Will Smith, which is one of the reasons why I think the honest view of all this is so important and makes such uh, a, a big impact with what it says by the time you get to the end of it. You get to see Will Smith as a whole person, as a regular, normal individual. He's very clear about that at the end there. He says, I am subject to the exact same you know, sticking points, problems, challenges, cravings, issues that all of us are subject to. 
I just so happen to be Will Smith. That's, that's the only difference between you and I. And it comes with fame and fortune and all that sort of stuff. But I'm still a human being at the end of the day. And I'm affected by the world and my life and, and the things that go on around me just like any other human being is. We talked a little bit about the idea of this sort of like darkness that's that's kind of caused him to second guess his decisions, to make bad decisions, to in certain cases succeed. And it all very much relates to the fitness journey, the idea of like the, the sort of shadow, that darkness that hides in people and its relationship to one's fitness journey is very clear and interesting it's it's funny i feel like and hey if you want to challenge me in this com in the comment section if you want to put up a challenge against this and you know say your piece feel free to i look forward to hearing about it um but i very much believe that a lot of the most elite people in most fields but very much so in the fitness industry have some sort of dark thing hiding away in their past usually the thing that's propelled them to where they are the the rocket fuel is something usually pretty dark kind of negative and usually the source of some sort of like pain or emotional trauma and it's just propelled them like rocket fuel to the upper limits of human capabilities and and physical uh fitness usually one doesn't try so hard if they don't have any sense of motivation or any real anything really pushing them from behind and usually the things that push most people happen to be pretty messed up not that great again if you want to challenge me go right on ahead this is very much anecdotal i'm not going off of science with that one uh, so what did you guys think about the episode? What did you think of this series? Uh, what are your thoughts on the idea of negativity and darkness and, and tragedy and, and trauma being a sort of rocket fuel for uh, one's success by way of creating a sort of indomitable spirit and almost insane quality to one's ambition? Do you agree with it? Do you not agree with it? I'd love to hear what you think. Comment below, let me know. Of course, please. Hit that subscribe button hit the like button it helps you know the channel and of course helps get this you know promoted to more people and that's hugely beneficial because that's what we want to do here we want to spread this word you know of solid positive fitness related content more often than not based on scientific evidence today this is you know much more about you know the feelings and just the vibe and personal experience more anecdotal but still nonetheless important in this particular context uh and yeah uh course you can join the galaxy become a, a star of, in the galaxy and support what we do here which like i said super important dope stuff and of course stay shining because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together peace